So you're about to discover my step-by-step -step system to go from rookie to doing deals quickly and without risk. The techniques and strategies that you must avoid when starting out so that you can do your first deal very, very quickly. A lot of investors m really make some really critical mistakes in the beginning and I want to make sure that you avoid these things. Uh, I'm going to also share with you why you only need to implement one or two strategies. That's it. With nothing complicated in order to be successful as a real estate investor. And I'm going to share with you how to use systems to automate your business so that you can make more money working less hours. Now, anyone starting out in real estate investing, my advice to you is always start with wholesaling. And that is the best strategy, absolutely the best strategy to begin with when you're starting out wanting to do your first deal. Because it's the easiest way to get started in real estate investing. You don't need to have good credit or cash in your bank account. You don't need to have money for repairs on the property. You never have to worry about getting stuck with a property. And you don't have to worry about dealing with banks and getting short sales approved. It really is the easiest way to get started in real estate investing. And let me show you really how easy it is to do wholesaling. So just I'm going to take a quick moment for those of you that may be on the line that don't really know what wholesaling is. I'm going to explain it in less than 60 seconds. For those of you that know already, let me explain it to the other guys. So here's how it works. You find a motivated seller, seller that is wanting to get rid of their problem property. They contact you and they say, hey, I want you to buy my deal. And you say, you know what? Yes, I'll I'll go ahead and I agree to buy your deal. You're just agreeing, you're, and I'll share with you exactly how this is done. You're just agreeing to buy the property at a particular price, and then you're going to go out and add something on top of that price. So you're going to say a seller may want to sell you the property for fifty thousand dollars, and you're going to go ahead and add say another ten thousand dollars to that price. So now you're going to go ahead and then try and sell that property for $60,000 to another investor. And when I say sell, I mean that very loosely. I mean just simply you're going to transfer that your agreement with the seller to that other investor and you're going to ask them to pay you an additional $10,000 on top of the $50,000 that they're going to have to pay the seller. So that's a total of $60,000 that they're paying for this property. And they get go ahead and they close on the deal. They're the ones that take money out of their pocket and take that risk. But you get the money. You get that $10,000 spread. And that's what wholesaling is. And so now when we talk about wholesaling, I'm here to teach you about virtual wholesaling, not just regular wholesaling. And so what about virtual wholesaling? How is that different? Well, with virtual wholesaling, you never have to personally meet with anyone. So you only need a cell phone uh, or a regular phone and a computer. That's really the only th the only thing you need in order to be able to do virtual wholesaling. You never have to personally inspect the property or know anything about repairs. Uh, you can work less by using systems to completely automate your business and eliminate all of the grunt work. And the best part is, the best part about virtual wholesaling is that the system allows you to do deals Anywhere in the USA, anywhere in the USA, using again only your, your computer and an internet connection. And really that's what I'm here to teach you today. It's taking wholesaling and taking it to the next level. And guys, now is the best opportunity for real estate investing. The real estate market has hit bottom and investors are buying again properties. Uh, tools and technology make it easier to do real estate investing without being a geek and without doing a lot of the grunt work that, that it used to take to do that in the past. And you can establish your real estate business anywhere in the USA while only using your cell phone and a laptop. And that's really why right now is the best time for you to get involved as a real estate investor. Now, so you may be wondering, hey, who is this guy, Chris Chico? Uh, you know, I am the creator and the founder of Virtual Wholesaling. I've successfully wholesaled hundreds, hundreds of properties in multiple cities across the country, and I am an expert in systems and automation for real estate investors. But despite that, I mean, why should you even listen to me? You know, how could you replicate what I'm doing? So I grew up in the island of Puerto Rico, dirt, dirt poor. I did not have a lot of money. In fact, this is the house that I grew up in when I was living in Puerto Rico. No running water, uh, no inside plumbing. It was me, my mom, my grandmother at the time living in this really, really small house. And so uh, we made a decision. My mom made a decision to go ahead and move to the States. And so we ended up moving to Miami. And when people think of Miami, they think of South Beach, they think of Sun and the Fun. But you know what? That wasn't the Miami that I experienced when I moved here. Uh, and, and that was when I was in high school. And I got to tell you that this, I, I grew up, and, and again, being in Miami without any money whatsoever. This right here, this house that you're seeing right here is the exact house 
that I lived in when I was in Miami. It still exists to this day. You can still drive by. It's 4217 Northwest 2nd Avenue in Miami, Florida. And it was a very tiny 700 square foot house. We were living on food stamps and on welfare. It was myself, my mom, my brother, my dad, all living in this in this very small house, sleeping in one room. And, uh, you know, I knew that there was a better way. So I started, I went on the path that most people take. And I went, went ahead and I went to college. I spent $40,000, got a degree in accounting. And I ended up getting a job, and that's really what um, what I end up what what the diploma got me. It was it got me really a lousy job that I hated. And I got to tell you, I started to work as an accountant, and I just really, really hated it. Um, I felt trapped. Uh, I thought, you know, I, I just felt trapped because I knew that there was a better way, but yet I had to work at this job in order to pay my bills and make ends meet. And so, you know, I knew, you know, I I I, I knew that there was a better way, uh, and, and and I just also felt stuck that I would never get out of this rat race. And I got to tell you, man, I mean, when you work for somebody, they work, they work you. They really work you because they want to get their money's worth. And, and I was putting in a lot of, a lot of hours, 10 to 12 hour days and, and really just uh, struggling, uh, making ends meet despite the fact that I was working so many hours. And so what I did is I started to look for opportunities. And I was looking like everybody else, you know, you know, you, you start looking for stuff and you find all kinds of stuff that's just crazy out there, uh, different ways to make money. And I was always kind of looking for that magic pill, that magic solution that would make me a millionaire almost, you know, ev- overnight, uh, which is never happens. But, you know, I've tried them. So I tried everything you could think about. And I was going through a really tough time because not only was I, was, was I working a job that I didn't like, I was working a lot of hours, I was also at night trying to find a way to make extra money. But on top of all that, I wasn't making enough money to pay my bills. So, you know, I had late notices, I was in foreclosure at a particular point, And so just I just wasn't getting anywhere. And, and, and perhaps you know that feeling, uh, perhaps you're experiencing that right now. And it's just a horrible, horrible feeling, feeling stuck, not knowing where to do or where to go. And then, you know, what happened is that just like everybody else, one fateful night, I was watching TV and uh, I saw one of those late night infomercials about real estate. And I was like, wow, I never thought about real estate investing. Let, you know, I thought you had to have money. And they were talking about no money down and everything else. And I thought, my God, this is great. No money down because I got no money. So this is a perfect, perfect marriage. Um, and, and really, I just amazed at what I saw. And so all of a sudden, I realized I was focused. The light bulb went up, went off in my head, and I said, you know what? Real estate is a vehicle. It's going to be my vehicle, and it's going to finally give me the money that I want. It's going to give me the, the lifestyle that I've always dreamed about, and this is it. I'm going to put everything else aside. I'm going to focus on real estate, and I, I that's what I did, and I did probably what a lot of you have done or probably are doing as you started uh, going, you know, attending seminars, going to course, uh, buying courses, and, and just consuming and consuming information, trying to trying to figure out, hey, how, did, how does this thing work? You know, and you go through a lot of stuff. You go through some courses that are really good, some of them, some that are really bad. You spend money on stuff that you couldn't really afford to spend money on. And I was just there, you know, searching, trying to find a way. But, you know, I got to tell you that there's a, a bit of frustration when you got a job and you don't know what you don't know what you're doing. But now when you find exactly what you want to do and now you're really putting 110 percent effort and it's not working, then that is the ultimate ultimate frustration because that was that's what I was experiencing because I now knew what I wanted I knew that I wanted real estate investing to be my vehicle for success but I wasn't getting anywhere with it and then I made a simple simple change in my whole entire approach to real estate investing that completely changed everything and instead of chasing a bunch of stuff you know because what happens is that you you know if you're like me, you're always interested in different opportunities. You get an email about this, email about that. You see this on the web. Next thing you know, you're attending a whole bunch of webinars and seminars. And, you know, now you got all this stuff in your head. You know, you don't know what to do. Should I do this? Should I do that? Will this work? Will this do- doesn't work? And you know what? What I did is I figured out, you know, I'm going to focus on one thing and really, really just focus on that and and try and make it work as opposed to going out like a rabbit and chasing, you know, uh, you know, being like that man, not being like a rabbit, but rather being that, you know, as Confucius says, don't be, you know, the man who chases two, two rabbits catches none. And so I made a decision to focus on one thing. And on, the, on this training in just a few minutes, I'm going to reveal to you exactly what that one thing was that I focused on. I'm not any sort of super investor that has these su- secret magical powers more where I have an IQ of Einstein and that's the only reason I'm able to do any of this stuff. You know, I'm just I'm just like you. And and in just a few minutes, I'm going to show you the simple method that I stumbled upon uh, literally to that changed my life. 
So let's talk about some of the challenges that real estate investors are having right now that in fact you might be having as well or that you may be encountering as you begin this journey to become a real estate investor. The first is targeting the wrong prospects. Guys, if you target the wrong prospect, you are going to fail. You're going to have a very difficult time in, in getting this business to work for you. And we're talking about targeting the right buyers and the right sellers so that you could do your first transaction, your first wholesale deal. And I'm going to reveal exactly who specifically I target that has given me the, given me the success that I've had and can that also help and can that also help you in achieving the same success in a very very short period of time. The second challenge that a lot of investors have is using the wrong marketing approach. Even if you identify the right prospects, if you use the wrong marketing, if you use the same marketing that everybody else is doing, then you're going to fail. And so again, that's one of the challenges that I see that real estate investors have when they're starting out brand new, trying to get the first deal under their belts. Uh, there are another challenge is that they don't have systems in place. You need systems, especially if you're starting out brand new in the business and you have a full-time job, you need systems. Otherwise, you're not going to have enough time in the day to get this business off the ground. And if you are full-time, you want to put systems in place so that you can do less of the grunt work. You can actually do the things that are the most important for your business, which is talking to buyers, talking to sellers, and doing deals. Uh, making the wrong offers. I see investors having such a difficult time with this. In other words, you could go out and get the right prospects. You can go out and get the right marketing uh, uh, executed, and now you have leads coming in. But if you if you just misjudge everything and you and you and you make the wrong offers, you're never going to win in this game. So again, you have to be able to make the right offers. And lastly, is basically the 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 toughest thing is letting the good deals slip away. And I see this happen all the time where investors, they, they just, it's almost like as if you were playing football and, and you got that ball all the way down to the two yard line and you never got it into the end zone, the score. And that's what happens with a lot of real estate investors. They do all this, all these things in order to get to that goal line and yet they drop the ball. And that's what I'm here to try and help you with so that that doesn't happen to you. So let's get right into it. Let me reveal the five steps that you must execute in order to get your first virtual wholesaling deal under your belt. And so step number one is finding highly motivated sellers. That is the beginning step. That is where it all begins. If you don't have motivated sellers, if you can't find deals, you're not going to get anywhere. Then the second step is finding the best cash buyers, not the tire kickers, not the wannabe investors, but the real guys that are out there buying properties each and every single month. You want to be able to go out and find those. You want to implement the right marketing strategy for both of those for both the buyers and the sellers and then you want to be able to create a system around that so you can work less so that the system does all of the grunt work for you and that it allows you the ability to do deals without you having to work a million hours a week and finally finally step number five the most important thing is how to make the right offers and be able to close deals and this is exactly what i'm going to reveal to you right now in the next few minutes step by step so that you can go ahead and get your virtual wholesaling business off the ground so let's talk about step number one find the most motivated sellers in your market now i gotta tell you that there are a lot of ways to find deals i don't know if you know this but these are just some of the ways you can go out and find deals now, you know, the problem is with these type of, there's a couple problems with this here right now, this particular slide that I'm showing you. Number one is that, first of all, understand that you cannot go after everybody. You cannot. People look at this list and say, my God, I want to do deals. I want to do deals, uh, do deals as quickly as possible. So I'm going to go after and do all of them. Well, that's the first mistake that most people make and the mistake that I made. So you really got to focus on one of these to be able to make it work and really do it well, get a couple of deals on your belt, and then you could add others onto that equation. But don't, don't try and go after everything. It's, you're going to fail because I tell you that from experience because that's exactly what happened to me. That's the reason why I almost didn't make it as a real estate investor. Although you have all these here, I would say that I don't like any of them. None of them, none of these I like, nothing. So even though I'll show you this list of all these ways you can go out and get deals, I'm telling you, no, don't do it. 
And, and the huge problem with these leads that I'm just showing you right now is that there's a lot of heavy competition with most of these lead sources, if not all. So you got it, you're in competition with other real estate investors. There's a lot of manual labor involved. Like for example, banded signs. You can go out and put those signs, those we buy houses signs, all over the place, all over the town. But you know, it takes a lot of work and effort to put those in the car and the trunk and then go out and put them in and then the city takes them down and Anyway, it's just a lot of work. There's a lot of strategies that just require a lot of grunt work, and I don't like the grunt work. Number another another issue is a lot of these strategies is that you're going after people, like say for example for sale by owners, and you're targeting them, and you're you know they, they don't really want to talk to you as a real estate investor. So you know there's a lot of uh, selling. You got to deal with rejection and everything else. And for me, that that. that that didn't really sit well with me. I don't. I don't know about you, but if you ever try to calling for sell by owner, who really doesn't want anything to do with you, but wants to wants a real buyer that's going to pay a lot more money than the house is ever worth, uh, and and you try and calling them, believe me, they're going to give give you an earful, and it's it's not. They're not going to tell you to have a nice day. And it's hard to do volume with a lot of these different lead sources because they're small. You know, you get a couple, a couple leads here, a couple leads there, but you know, nothing really substantial. And if you know, it's not going to give you enough to get a deal fast. You're going to have to wait, you know, eight months, six months, whatever, in order to get enough leads through that particular lead source in order to be able to put a deal together. And see, that's what the list that I just showed you is what most investors go out and target. And if and I want to use the analogy of an iceberg because most investors if you if you look at an iceberg the iceberg you know, when you look at the top of the iceberg the iceberg that appears at the top of the water that what you see is really the a very very small part of that iceberg. The majority of that iceberg is on the water. Well, that's the analogy that I want to I stress with regards to these lead sources. That what most investors target when they target these lead sources are just the tip of the iceberg. What I like to do, I like to go after a particular type of seller that is in abundance in a particular market. A seller that is that will give you more leads that you, that you, that you can ever handle in any, in any market in the country and that most investors don't target. So now, what is this? What is the best type of seller that I'm going to share with you that you want to be able to go out and target? Well, guys, it is the tired landlord. The tired landlord, the landlord that is just fed up with the problem property, with the toilets and the and, and everything, the tenants, and they just say, I want out. I want out of this place. Just take it off my hands. And the reason why tired landlords are really the best type of leads for you to go after is that they're easy to find. I'm going to show you exactly where to find them. You can start small and then you can ramp up as you do more deals so it works for either an investor that has very little money to spend or someone that is already up and running and wants to go out and do more deals. Uh, you're not in competition with other real estate investors, so you know, so so you don't have to worry about uh, uh, getting somebody else, you know, to, to to beat you on the deal or anything like that. Uh, and again, the other part of it about this particular lead source is that uh, the great opportunity is that most investors market to them absolutely wrong. They just do it horrible. And if you and, and if you understand what you need to do and how to approach this lead source, which I'm going to reveal to you in just a few minutes, you're going to be heads and shoulders above everybody else. And so really that's the reason why I love landlords. So let's talk about what specifically, what kind of landlords is it that I go after? Well, I go after single family houses, duplexes, triplex, or fourplexes. Those are all considered residential properties. I don't do any commercial or anything like that. That's a different, different type of, of seller. Another thing that I focus on with this is that I want them to have owned the property for at least 10 years or the longer the better, at least 10 years or more. And then uh, one other additional criteria actually that I don't have here is that I only target people that own their property in their own individual name. All right, so I'm not, if somebody owns a property in a corporation as a seller, I'm not going to bother with them. I'm only going to go after those people that have that own their property in a in an, in their own individual name because that means that they're not a professional investor and that's who we really want. And lastly, what I do is that you know in any particular city you have a ton of these sellers to go after. So what I do is I focus on the zip codes in your particular area 
where I know other investors are actively buying property. So think about it. If you know that there are buyer investors out there wanting properties in a particular area, a particular neighborhood, then you want to go out and find deals in those neighborhoods because it's going to be really, really easy for you to just quickly take those deals, transfer them over, and make your money. All right, and so that's the, the my criteria for the tired landlords. And and again, I want to just tell you that the, one of the mistakes that I did when I was first starting out is I went after everything that you could go after uh, when it comes to lead sources. And I got to tell you that for me, what made a difference is focusing. And from my experience and the experience of my students who do well, who get out the gate, who do their first deal, focusing on this one lead source makes all the difference in the world. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to step number two. And step number two is for us to go out and find the best cash buyers for the deals that we have found, as I mentioned to you in the previous step, by going out and targeting absentee owners and landlords. Now, there are many techniques that you can go out and implement to find buyers. Some work great, others have lackluster results, and some are a waste of time. For example, a lot of you on the call here may consider Craigslist to be a great source to go out and post your properties and try to get buyers for your deals. Well, it may be, but me personally, I don't like it. And what what will happen is, is that this, you can go out and you can go out and find a hot deal that you found, let's say you with the landlords, as I mentioned, as, as I just taught you here, you find a hot deal, you post it on Craigslist for sale, you'll get calls and emails about the property from people that are interested. The huge problem, huge, huge, huge problem is that you don't know who are the real buyers and who are the tire kickers. Who do you, how, do you know anything about these people that are calling you? It could just be somebody sitting, you know, having their morning coffee, you know, eating their donut and saying, oh, you know what? I'm browsing the computer. Look at this house. Let me call them and send them an email and see if I can get more information. But they have no desire or no, 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 no way of buying a property or taking that deal off your hands. So you don't want to waste time with those people. And what about what about a newspaper ad? Some people put out newspaper ads. They say, well, let me go ahead and put a, an ad in a paper. And you could do that. You can go out and spend money to place an ad in the local newspaper. You get a few calls from people interested in your great deal. And so the huge problem is that most of the people that are calling from these ads are completely unqualified to buy a property and i tell you this from experience i spent money on, on classified advertising and then you know i look at what i spend and versus what i got and i say it, it doesn't make any sense so i stopped doing it and so the bottom line is that you've wasted a lot of time and money and and really gone through a lot of aggravation to really get nowhere and so what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to just tell you do, that you want to avoid wannabe buyers. You want to avoid the tire kickers. You want to work with the real deal, the guys and gals that are out there buying deals. That if you if you present them a good deal, they're going to go ahead and snap it up. So who are these people? Who are the real buyers? Let me share with you the criteria, my specific criteria for the best buyers out there. And what you want is you want someone that has purchased Proof that you have proof that they purchased an investment property in the last three to six months, meaning that they don't live there. They and and they've gone out and they bought a property with a hard-earned money, took money out, money out of their bank account and bought something. So they just before I move on, because there's a couple other points I'm going to make here, but just think about that. What better buyer for you to go after than somebody that last month bought another investment property and wants to buy another one this month? That's the perfect buyer. That's what you want. And so what we're going to do is we want to target those buyers that have bought either single family houses, duplexes, triplex, or quads. Again, fourplexes, we're dealing with only with single family. And again, why? Because those are the type of leads we're going out after anyway. So why would we want to sell them anything else? All right. And you could narrow it down, okay, and the zip codes where you're working with the sellers. So in other words, you're going to, the way I'm going to teach you how to approach this is that you can go after and specifically find the buyers that are buying in your particular neighborhoods that you are already targeting for deals in. So you're talking about just, you know, laser focused on exactly what the type of deals that these guys and gals are already buying. And that's what you want. And I'm gonna show you in just a minute the specific resource that you're gonna use in order to find these cash buyers. So let's just do a little review. Where are we at right now? Number one is you wanna focus on tired landlords over any other type of leads. I've covered that with you and I've shown you exactly why that makes sense. Number two, you wanna go out and find the best buyers for your deals 
and you again you want to focus on cash buyers buyers that bought something in the last three to six months right makes sense right the next thing the big question is how do we reach these buyers and sellers how do we go ahead and target them so we can do deals and that's where we go into step number three which is the marketing implementing the right marketing strategy to find these buyers and sellers and put you in a position to be able to do deals now there are many types of marketing that you can utilize to find buyers and sellers for example you can go out and find buyers and sellers through craigslist which i covered already in the past two uh different uh, points that i just covered about craigslist and there's 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 minuses with associated with craigslist there are some positives but i particularly don't like craigslist uh, you can go out and, and use classified ads you can go out and put uh, out signs that say we buy houses uh, for cash and try to get sellers that way you can go out and and and, and find sellers by calling for sale by owners you can go out and try to find buyers by by going out and being a for sale by owner yourself with a property that you found that you're trying to get rid of so you know there's also uh, for example a lot of you may hear that you can go out and and get buyers and sellers with social media with facebook and maybe with twitter and the big problem with all of these marketing methods is that they completely miss the mark you see we're looking for very specific buyers and sellers and we're not going to find them using any of these generic approaches that i just showed you right now and really there is only one method of marketing that we can use to find our very special types of buyers and sellers the tired landlord and the cash buyer and it's really using good old fashion snail mail direct mail and you know what the reason why direct mail works the reason why it works so well is that because it's easy to get started regardless of your marketing budget. So whether you have $50 to spend or $1,000 to spend a month, you can do direct mail. There's less competition when using direct mail because most investors do it wrong. And I'm going to share with you in just a minute exactly how to do direct mail so that it works really, really well for you. You don't have to print anything or deal with any grunt work. You used to. When I started, it used to be that I would print postcards and letters at home, and it was just really, really a lot of grunt work, but you don't have to do that anymore. I'm going to show you in just a minute a great resource for doing just that, doing direct mail without any other grunt work. And you will not find the tired landlords, and you will not find the cash buyers any other way. This is the only way to target these people. And the reason why investors fail at direct mail is simply because they do what everybody else does they go out and they they they, they do use this marketing that really is just horrible it's just your typical we buy houses cash everybody's doing that and what happened with me is i did try that approach and it didn't work and through a lot of trial and error and through a lot of frustration i came up with my own unique marketing system that really dramatically increases the response rate that gets these type of sellers to raise their hands and call you even when they're getting direct mail from other people they're going to call you because of the way that i've designed my marketing system and in my marketing this system is designed around these tiny little yellow postcards that are written in a very unique way that are unlike anything else that any other seller or buyer has seen before and in just a few minutes, I'm going to show you how well these tiny little postcards work and how you can get copies for you to use in your own real estate business. So let's go ahead and do another review. Number one is you want to focus on tired landlords over any other type of leads. Number two, you want to find the best buyers for your deals. So you want to focus on cash buyers, buyers that purchase an investment property in the last three to six months. And then number three, you want you want to be able to use the best method to target both of these types of leads. And that method is the direct mail marketing. So now we're going to go ahead and put it all together, put the focus. You know, again, we talked about the sellers and the buyers and the marketing. How do we take that and put to, put that together in a system so that now we can go ahead and execute and be able to go to that next level? And that's what the next level is, which is step number four, which is using systems to automate and eliminate the grunt work of your business. So I want to talk to you about the magic of systems. And, and systems are great because systems eliminate as much of the grunt work as possible with whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, systems allow you to focus on the things that matter most, aka making money. Uh -huh. Systems allow you to put in a lot less time in your business. And 
those are the key reasons why you want to be able to have systems in your business to be able to help you and making money with a lot less time and effort. And so the systems that we want to implement in our business is we want to find uh, online tools to find sellers so that we can eliminate any sort of grunt work. We don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to go to the courthouse or anything like that. We want to use automated marketing systems so that our marketing goes out with us, us, us having to do any grunt work. Uh, we want a seller screening system so that we can have, uh, we only speak with the most highly qualified people. We don't want to talk to, to deadbeat sellers. We don't, we don't want to talk to sellers that want a lot of money for the property. We want sellers that know exactly what we do, what we're about, and they're ready to talk to us about us buying their property. We want to be able to have a buyer screening system, a way for us to screen all the tire kickers and, uh, and, and the clowns out of the way so that we only talk to the, high, the, the best cash buyers in any particular market. We want to have a system for evaluating our deals so we can do that quickly and with minimizing errors. And, and the system has to be such that we can actually have somebody else do it for us. And finally, we want to have a closing and collecting money system. How do we make sure that we, when we find a deal, that that deal goes from beginning to end and we are able to make money from that deal? So let's talk about the first thing, which is finding sellers and buyers online because again i don't like the grunt work i don't want to go to the courthouse do you want to go to the courthouse and spend a half day at the courthouse writing all kinds of stuff down for leads that may never work out or that you may only get a couple here or there and so you're going to have to spend months and months cultivating these things so that you can have a chance of making money i don't want to do that so how do we find the leads? Well, easy guys. There's two sources I recommend. There's one called listsource.com, another one called realquest.com. Now realquest is actually a comp service, but you can also get your seller and buyer leads from there. But if you already have comps uh, service, maybe you have uh, the MLS, perhaps access to the multiple listing service and you can go, go ahead and go to list source and be able to find these sellers that I talked to you about. You can go to list source right now and get these sellers. Now, if you're going to use any of these here, list source or real quest, make sure you contact my representative for special accounts with lower prices and higher account limits. If you just go right there and you just sign up or if you call them over the phone, they're going to give you an account that you're going to pay probably double what you would for the seller and buyer records. So you want to be able to you know get my contact so that you can go ahead and get these records on the cheap and i'll show you in just a minute how you can go ahead and do that and again with the real quest account the the regular real quest account just gives you a certain number of records you can download per month but i have a special arrangement uh for virtual wholesaling members where you're able to get double that okay so now that's about that's how we find the sellers how do we then do our marketing well we automate our marketing using direct mail and instead of in the old old school way of going out and printing postcards or going to kinkos and then you know just doing all that crazy stuff we use click to mail and click to mail allows us to create our postcards online and send them out online all with a few clicks of the mouse button so how do you use click to mail very very easily you take your list the list that i showed you how to get the list for the absentee owners the landlords and the buyers and i told you to get those in list source or real quest and so you take those lists and you upload them to uh, click to mail you take the postcards that i give you and you duplicate those on click to mail it'll probably take you about an hour to duplicate the postcard just you know once you get the hang around hang uh, of the system and how to how to how to create the cards very easy the great thing is is that you do it once and then you don't have to hit do it again so once you create the postcard it's a one-time thing you don't have to touch it ever ever again and then you just hit the send button and literally it, it, this eliminates the grunt work of printing and of licking uh licking stamps and all the other crazy stuff that i used to do before uh now it gets done automatically and this is having a system in place to be able to do your direct mail without you having to lift a finger because the next time you have everything in there you do is you just do a few clicks of the mouse button and bam it's out the door on its way the next thing we, that we use and, and what i recommend is using a 24-hour recorded message system and so the way this works is that the next way to automate your real estate business is by using a 24-hour recorded message system. Now, most investors simply will put their cell phone number or just some regular phone number on all of their direct mail on their marketing. And so what this means is that people are going to call you directly. And so you're going to talk to everybody, which means that you're probably talking to people that you shouldn't be talking to anyway. People that are not motivated, sellers that are not motivated, buyers that are not serious. And so you want to avoid this. So instead of sellers talking to you 
directly, what they're going to do is you're going to have the sellers call a very special number on the postcards, and it's a 24-hour recorded message that they call in and they listen to a recorded message. And the recording, the recorded message basically tells them, you know, what we do, how we do it, and explains everything to them. And so what happens now is that only the motivated sellers actually leave a message. So whenever somebody leaves a message and says, hey, call me, that means they've listened to all the information and they're ready to do a deal. So there's no, when you get on the phone with them, you don't have to explain to them what you do over and over again. Basically, you just get right down to business. And the great thing is that once they leave a message, then they're already, like I said, predisposed to doing business with you. So there's no hard selling. They're glad that they're talking with you. So there's no convincing required or anything like that. But most importantly, it frees up your time because picture this. I want you to imagine that you do a direct mail campaign and you have all of these uh, all of these uh, sellers that are now calling you and let's say they're all calling and listening to this 20 you're you're at dinner having dinner with your family and all the while you're having dinner all these sellers are calling and calling you and listening to your message and getting an explanation of everything you do how you do it and then they're asked to you know to, to go ahead and leave their information after the message so that they can be contacted back and all this is happening in the background without you having to be looking at the phone and saying oh my god I got to sell a call that, that's coming in. I got to answer this, otherwise they'll go, they'll go away. And this this there's, there's a uh, specific way of doing this. The verbiage and the postcards is done in a very specific way so that people know that they're calling in not to talk to anybody, but to actually listen to a message. So there's no expectancy of them talking to someone right away, which again is great because it frees up your time. And then the other part of it is is that if you if you have a full time job. And, and so you're at work during the day, you can't be talking to sellers as they call in. So this way, they're all, they're all gonna call in, their, their, their information is gonna be captured, and then when you get off of work, and you go back home, then that's when you are going to be able to listen in to those messages of the sellers that are really, really serious. And that's the only way you're going to be able to do this business if you're working a full-time job. And the last but not least, and really for me, that was a, a it's, it's one of the main benefits for me is that there's little or no selling. Again, when you get on the phone with these people after they've listened to your information, you know they've already they they know everything. They're ready. They're like, hey, let's. Can we work something out? I want you to buy my house. I hear what you have to say and I like it. So what's the next step? And so really the whole, the way this whole process works is the system is really very, very simple. You go out and you use click to mail, you get the list. Like I, like I just taught you, you go out and you create your postcard. You take my postcard, put it in click to mail and you send it out. You send out the postcards, the sellers get your postcard. They pick up the phone and listen to your 24 hour recorded message. And then again, the ones that are interested leave a message, and those are be those are the ones that become your highly qualified leads. It's really, really very, very simple. But as you can see, by having the system in place, you eliminate a lot of the grunt work that you would normally have to do. Now, what about the cash buyers? We do exactly the same thing with the buyers as we do with the sellers. We find them on ListSource or on RealQuest.com. We send them a postcard via click to mail, and then we have them listen to a 24 hour recorded message. And then the option for them, for the buyers is a little bit differently. The option for the buyers is either A, they can go ahead and either, when, when they get the postcard, the option is either A, they can go visit our website, or they can call and listen to a 24 hour recorded message. And then when they go to our website, we're, we're sending the buyers a postcard because we have a problem property for sale. And so, and again, so once we have a deal under wraps with a seller, we'll get our buyers involved. And so we'll send this postcard and the postcard, when they get to the website, the website will have the information about the property. We'll have pictures and everything else. And I'll show with you exactly how to get those. And then now they have an option of looking at all that information about the property and making a decision if the deal is for them and not for them. And so, you know, now here, here's, here's the thing. I've shown you exactly how my system works and, and in detail what the whole mechanics of it are. So I don't want you to believe me and to, to, you know and say, hey, does this really work, Chris, or is this just some elaborate thing you made up? It really isn't. So let me just show you direct proof of how this works. And I'm going to show you this by an actual direct mail campaign that I did. Here's a campaign that I recently sent out. So I sent out uh, 600 postcards. This is the, the first I, I sent out. Now, keep in mind is this. 
everybody has a different budget so if you have you, you could do this even if you have a hundred dollars to spend or you can do this if you have a thousand dollars to spend so it just depends on your budget you can start small and then you can ramp up or you can start big whatever you want to do so I sent out um, a direct mail campaign I sent out 600 postcards and then I sent out another 600 postcards one after the other so I sent out a total of 1200 postcards and I spent about four hundred dollars now keep in mind again you can invest as little as fifty dollars for a mailing campaign to get started so you don't need a lot of money to go ahead and get started a few days later the calls start to come in monday monday i had a now this is with 1200 postcards monday i had a hundred calls come in all right the next day tuesday calls are still coming in i had 65 calls come in then the calls continue to come in every single day and if you notice on friday I, now this they're starting to die down but i got 20 calls okay and and if you notice the the, the one after friday saturday and sunday so I, I still had that trickle of calls all in all when all said and done i had a total of 285 seller calls from that 1200 piece mailing i gotta tell you this there is absolutely okay the bottom line is this there's absolutely no other method or system in real estate that can produce such large number of leads in source in such a short period of time there there is none Bottom line is that if you want, if you want to talk to 100 sellers next week, you can do that with my system. You can't do that with anything else, and that's the reason why this works, and that's the reason, the the reason for my success with this, and the reason for so many students that I have that are successful with this system is because they're able to focus on one thing, one thing only, to turn the turn the knob, turn the system on, and then be able to have these type of results literally, literally within a week. So now let's move on to step number five. And again, we've covered the sellers that we want to talk to, the buyers that we want to talk to. We covered the marketing. We covered, hey, how do we put a system in place to take and be able to get those people to call us so now we have leads to work with. So now what do we do next? What's that final stage? And that final stage is evaluating the deals, making offers, and being able to do deals. So let's talk about speaking with sellers. You're going to use my seller lead sheet. Uh, to ask all the right questions about the property and the particular seller situation. So you're not just going to get there on the phone and just wing it with the seller. You're going to have a, a, a series of questions. You're going to ask them just about the property and about their situation. Very, very simple. You're going to use, there's a particular technique that I use that it's a, what I call my 15 second evaluation technique. And basically what you want to do is when the seller calls you, you want to be able to make them an offer right there on the phone. But what happens is a lot of investors do a lot of calculations. They do like, you know, well, you know, if you're if you're familiar at all with real estate investing or maybe if this is your first time, this may not be familiar with you. But if you've been around, you know that it's it's formulas, you know, got to calculate what the purchase price is, less repairs, multiply that by 70 percent. Then you get this number and then you do this and you do that. And finally, you come up with a number for to make an offer. But, you know, you can't do that on the fly. And, 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 and how do you do that? How do you estimate repairs if you've never know anything about real estate you've never done a deal before so i have this specific technique that i use that basically you could go ahead and pull up a report on the property and within about 15 seconds you would know exactly what you need to buy that property for what other investors are buying and exactly what it's worth and what you have to do next on the phone with the seller very very easy so once we get on the phone with the seller and again with if you do it right you don't need to know anything about repairs nothing absolutely nothing you don't need to know what a roof costs what a bathroom costs you don't need to know if there a bath if a bathroom needs to be under the property it doesn't really matter and and what we want to do is we want to make offers right over the phone remember we're not going to be visiting these people we're going to be doing this strictly over the phone and again keep in mind this is very important these sellers have pre-qualified themselves by listening to your recorded message and then ask you to call them back so there's no hard selling required on your part at all now once you find a deal what do we do next because what happens is that <clears throat> once you find a deal then you agree with the seller the seller says you know what I'll, i'm willing to sell my property for fifty thousand dollars you say you know what mr seller yes i'm okay with that i'll I, I think it's a great deal for me i'll go ahead and i want that i want the house at fifty thousand dollars now you're not going to send them any money what you're going to do is you're going to put together you're going to sign you're going to uh, uh, fill out my what i call my risk-free uh, agreement and my risk I have two agreements I have one for the buyers and one for the sellers so the seller agreement uh, allows us to really just to simply uh, walk away from the deal with zero risk or liability so we're just committing we're just we're almost kind of saying maybe to the seller we're not saying hey I'm gonna go to the bank and get a loan I'm saying hey I think that's a good price here I'm gonna I'm gonna fill out this paperwork you fill it out I fill it out we both sign it 
and then we take it from there. That's really all that, that, that it is. And we never put up any down payments or any deposits or anything like that. And then we go out and then we sell the deal. And selling a deal is really, really easy. You just simply present the deal to the buyers that we found in our previous steps as we covered. And you can either contact them by phone or by email. It just depends on whatever you want. And they'll either say yes or they'll say no. And then you'll use my what I call my assignment of contract, which I'll give you. And I'll give you that. I'll give you the, the paperwork and along with all the videos and everything else to transfer the deal to them for a fee. All right, and that really is the whole way the transaction is done. So let me just kind of give you a better overview. So let's say that we go out and we found a we found a seller that wants to sell us a house, and the house is worth one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. And we say, you know what? I'll buy the house for fifty thousand dollars. And they say, fine, I'll sell it to you for fifty thousand dollars because it needs work, the tenants, and all these other tassels. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Just take it off my hands. So what happens then is that you decide, okay, you know, I'm going to add $10,000 to this thing and I'm going to try to sell it for $60,000. So you go out to the investor buyers that are buying in that exact area and you say, hey, I just found a great deal. Do you want it for $60,000? And they say, yeah, we want it because it's worth $125,000. This is a great deal. So what happens? The, the, the buyer is the one now that takes possession of that deal. He closes on that property and then you get paid the $10,000 difference without you ever having to own the property. And you know what? Everybody, everybody in this transaction is extremely happy. The seller is happy to finally get rid of the problem property. The buyer is happy because they're getting a great deal on a property in an area that they're already wanting, wanting these deals in. And you're happy because you got paid and in the process there was never any risk to you you never placed a deposit you never signed for a loan you never closed and took ownership of the property you never had to worry about making payments you never even left your house that's how good it was for you and so that's because you never personally met with a seller everything was done via fax phone or email you never personally inspected the property since you did not have to worry about estimating repairs you never personally met with a buyer since you communicated mostly via email and phone the whole entire thing was done in a completely virtual way you could be, you could have been doing this from your laptop sitting on your pool that's how easy this whole transaction is completed without you ever having to physically go anywhere so now what i want to do is this i want to share with you some uh, completely unsolicited testimonials about how well these strategies and tactics works and really what people think of this particular system and so a lot of times you see testimonials or and and you know that you don't know are they solicited that, that, that i go and say hey do me a favor could you give me a testimonial come on just say a couple of good things about me etc etc i don't like to do those so what i what i the way i I'm going to show you these is actually I just went to Facebook and I just search and found people that were saying positive comments about me. And that's it. I mean, and, and instead of you f trying to figure out, hey, if this guy for real or not for real, let me give you some examples like this one here and Facebook. Uh, this person said, I need a mentor. I have not I have not completed my first deal yet. I've been actively uh, investing, trying uh, actively trying since November. Um, I'm frustrated and aggravated. And here somebody says, you know what? Uh, Chris Chico has awesome marketing information uh, and Jody says his info is step by step uh, so they definitely so Jody's basically saying that my all of my systems and how I teach things is step by step by step and I'm going to reveal to you in just a minute exactly how that works uh, here's Sean says does anyone have Chris Chico's virtual wholesaling course is it good or bad Daniel says Chris uh, virtual wholesaling equals gold Tony says uh, he agrees with Daniel James says it's great. Here's another one. Derek's about the same thing. Derek says it's the main thing I use. I cannot say enough good things about it. People complain about spending money for systems. I tell you that having a system is essential and I've chosen Chris Chico as mine. I've made a few tweaks here or there, but other than that, it is my baseline. Rondo says it's awesome. If you have, uh, it, you will have about 50 aha moments while reading it. It literally puts you in a position to win if you implement his system. Tony says it's the best. Get it. Derek says I do and I use it as my system. I have a few things. I've added a few things, but for the most part, it is what I do. Um, here's another one here. Uh, comments from Tony Davis. Yeah, Chris's stuff is awesome. I'm kicking myself for procrastinating and not jumping on that. Uh, Joe Ellen says, I got my first deal with his postcards. He knows what he is doing. 
Joe says, Chris Chico is a real deal. Glad you're working with him. Max says, I highly recommend Chris Chico. He and his team are really good at responding to questions. His system is well worth every penny. And here's another one. Laura says, let's see here. I'm not understanding the purpose of virtual wholesaling out of state. If the deals are for sale by owners. So she's asking about virtual wholesaling, trying to get some ideas as far as how exactly, uh, how exactly can you do it? And her responses were for Mel says, you know what? Chris Cheek, uh, whatever questions you have about virtual wholesaling, you should ask of Chris Chico. He does virtual wholesaling and is considered an authority. I've seen him answer other questions, especially in other groups. And Jeff says, Chris Chico is an expert at it, has a ton of great information teaching how to do it. Guys, I didn't make these up. I didn't, you know, these are all random people that are just saying great things about exactly the information that I just revealed to you today, unsolicited. And I want to show you that because uh, it really is for the purposes of you understanding that everything I've explained to you here that I've revealed to you here on this particular uh, uh, webinar presentation is 100% legitimate. It is 100% real and I'm giving you the best advice that anyone can give you with regards to becoming a real estate investor and getting out the gate and getting started and doing your first deal. It has nothing to do, it doesn't matter if, if you, now obviously I'm gonna share with you how if you want it, if you want my personal help, how you can get it. But even if you decide against that, the information that I've given you here is the blueprint. It's exactly what you need to do in order to be successful. So here's the deal. I want you to be my next success story. I want you to have the same success I've had, the same success that my students have had, and I want you to avoid making the mistakes that a lot of new investors make, and I want you to focus on a plan that works that you can implement and you can put to work and you can create a business that will get you everything you need. So what do you need to be a successful virtual wholesaler? What are the things that you need? Well, you need a phone and a computer with an internet connection. You just need a few hours a week. So it's, it's a great program if you have a full-time job. You need to be able to know what to do step by step. And I'm gonna show you exactly what how I can help you with that. And you just need to have the desire and the persistence to make this business work. What you don't need is you don't need to have cash in the bank or to have good credit. You don't need to have years of experience as a real estate investor. You don't need to spend time learning a bunch of complicated strategies. So what would your day be like as a virtual wholesaler? You'd be wheeling and dealing at your desk because you can work from home. You can work from anywhere, really. So you could actually be doing deals on vacation. You could be like me and have Starbucks be your office. You can provide for your family. You could buy the nice things that you've always wanted, the home you've always wanted, the car you've always wanted. You can take those vacations that you've always wanted to take with you and your loved ones. And bottom line is that you can enjoy life. You can actually just be happy and, and be able to finally have that financial independence that you've always dreamed about. So if you have that computer and a, and a phone and an internet connection so you can work from anywhere and you have the desire to make an extra part-time income or full-time income or even replace your current income and you desire to, have, to be able to provide a better lifestyle for you and your family, then the only thing you're missing is really a step-by-step -step system to get started and a coach. And while I want to be your coach, I want to be the one that helps you and, and be able to implement this and get you to that next level.